What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a lovely, lovely day today. Today we're talking all about a victim narrative, how to kind of recognize it in yourself and then work through it so that you can come out on the other side and not have this mindset that is basically keeping you stuck somewhere that you probably don't want to be. As someone who used to have a victim narrative, I'm very familiar with this and I know what it feels like. I know there are reasons for why you have this victim narrative and usually just someone saying snap out of it is not very useful. So I'm going to share a lot of tips and tricks and exercises that you can do um, that will hopefully help you. I did some browsing around social media to see what kind of information there is out there about a victim narrative just so I can kind of provide you guys with things that you haven't heard yet and there really isn't much out there a lot of the information is coming from those male like motivational podcasts which in my opinion are not very healthy because snap out of it doesn't work for a lot of people so <laughs> we're not gonna do that and then there's also a lot of information about how bad it is and how damaging it is and how you should avoid people with a victim narrative and I was just like what is this like sure I partially agree like coming out of it I can see how I was toxic and damaging um, to the people in my life and my relationships and how I was annoying and that like sucks to hear it's hard to like <laughs> accept that but it's true to a certain extent but that doesn't really help you if you're someone with a victim narrative you just kind of start guilting yourself and that doesn't help anyone and then you're like oh let's snap out of it but it's not always so easy so we're gonna go a different route and try to understand what a victim narrative is and why it forms and how you can shift it. If you're new here, hi, I'm Nika. I like to make videos about all the important topics in the self-development space and I like to make my videos and my content very actionable so when you are done watching this video you can like do the exercises and actually start creating a change. So if that's up your alley then make sure to subscribe and check out my other social media. I'll have it all here um, and now let's get into this video. So before we start, we need to make something very, very clear. And that is that having been a victim or being a victim in a specific scenario does not necessarily equal having a victim narrative. So if you try to shift your victim narrative, it doesn't mean that you haven't been wronged. And it doesn't mean that all those feelings connected to you having been a victim in a scenario are not valid and you should just throw them away. Usually a victim narrative is a coping mechanism and it means that you haven't actually fully processed your emotions regarding this situation and, and that's why you haven't really been able to move on. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But a victim narrative is a mindset. I like to call it a narration just because it makes more sense in my mind. Like if you imagine a character that has been wronged and now she is experiencing and seeing life through a victim lens, like her whole life is, is experienced through that lens. And you can imagine what the narration of that character would be like. What are the things she keeps telling herself? How does she keep acting and speaking and all that? My point is that you can choose your narrative and you can choose your mindset. And sure, it might not be easy. It's a practice. It takes time and energy. And depending on your situations and why you got into a victim narrative. It might be harder or easier, but it is possible. And step number one is to decide to change it because it's not serving you anymore. Let's get a little more granule on how a victim narrative actually looks like from a different perspective. Because if someone tells you like, this is how you're acting, it's very annoying, we have to tiptoe around you, blah, 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 you get defensive and you're not really open to change usually. So. Let's see it from the perspective of your friend Tiffany. I'm just going to make up a scenario and we're just going to go with it. So Tiffany has been in a relationship with Chad for two years and she was happy, you know, she saw her future with him, blah, 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 and then he cheated on her. So we can all agree that Tiffany was a victim in this scenario. She was blindsided. Obviously, that feels awful. It feels awful to be cheated on, especially if you don't suspect a thing. Like, it's shocking. It's unnerving. You feel like your life is out of control. Like, suddenly one thing can just drop and your whole life is different. And you feel like you might be unlovable or not good enough or like, what's wrong with me that someone would cheat on me. You know, there's a lot, a lot of feelings associated with being cheated on and a lot can be brought up with that. 
and it's not easy to deal with. So you are Tiffany's friend and you're letting her experience those emotions and vent about it and you're there for her. You can be, you know, a shoulder to cry on. You talk about it a lot. Um, you give her advice if she needs it. Like you're really there for her. You're being an amazing friend um, and a support system. And let's say five months goes by and Tiffany is still just recycling the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and you're like, you know, you're trying to be a good friend, but you're like, Jesus Christ, it's been five months. Like, can we move on? Like, I know it's hard to be cheated on, but can we like take a step forward? You know, as a friend, you start to kind of get annoyed and that's like a normal experience. You start to get tired of pitying someone all the time and you're like, okay, like, I love you. I want you to move forward. Like, let's move on with our lives, you know? But Tiffany has decided, you know, this is her narrative now. And when you, let's say, bring up that you're dating a guy, she's like, oh, don't bother, he's gonna cheat on you anyway. You know, everything is seen through that lens. And then let's say one day you don't reply to her for a few days because you were busy and she calls you and she's like, I'm so hurt by you, like this is so rude. Um, you've like re-traumatized me, like this is so triggering because this is what Chad did and everything, her whole world, her whole narration, the lens she sees her life through is through that experience of being cheated on and it just keeps going on and on. You maybe get to a point where you're like, I need to like step away from this person because it gets exhausting. Okay, sorry about this change. I was getting so hot. I had to put my hair up, but I just wanted to kind of paint the picture of what a victim narrative can look like. And of course it can come from so many different things, um, but I just wanted to make it very simple so that we're we're all, we all get the picture. If you have a victim narrative, hopefully you're like seeing yourself in some of those things. I know that I definitely see myself and I'm like, oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Like I was acting like that. And like, you kind of maybe feel a little guilty or you might be getting defensive. Like, yeah, but he did cheat and blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> like there are different experiences, but hopefully you see yourself in it and you're like, okay, I wanna make a change. So if you are ready to make a change, then we'll move on to the actual exercises so you can do that. Okay, I want you to grab a piece of paper, a journal, your notes app, whatever, just somewhere where you can write down answers to these four questions that I'm gonna read out. And I want you to answer them before you move on to the next part of the video. Question number one, if I'm being really honest with myself, how is this victim narrative serving me? So pause, answer, and then move on to the next question. What is the hidden positive benefit of me being a victim? Question number three, what positive benefits do I get from people by being a victim? And the last question, question number four, which needs of mine are being met by me being a victim? So if you have any kind of repetitive negative behavior, a coping mechanism, whatever you want to call it, there's always a reason why you keep doing it. And that reason is that there is some sort of a positive hidden benefit. So there's something you're getting out of this and it's usually subconscious. And just by bringing it to the surface and seeing it, it kind of loosens its grip. So for example, I have a victim narrative because I've realized that my hidden benefit is that when people pity me, I feel loved and cared for. So of course, if that is subconscious, you're not gonna stop doing it because you're getting what you need. But if you bring it to the surface and you can look at it and be like, okay, there are other ways that I can get love and care that are way healthier than me being a victim narrative, which has a lot of negatives attached to it. I can get love and care in a very healthy way that's not gonna be ruining my life. That's very extreme, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Let's go through some very, very common positive, hidden positive benefits of being a victim. So number one, by getting pity, you keep getting validation and attention. So in the cheating example, you might feel very unloved and like, you know, someone just ripped your heart out that is not, a caring loving activity <laughs> and so you're like starved of that and then you keep being the victim because you get attention and you get care and that's something that you really need second thing you don't have to take responsibility of where you are your life your future which is like comfortable sometimes you're like this is this is all right we'll stay here third one you've been wronged and therefore you're good and you're right and the person who did it to you is wrong 
and bad and that feels good to our ego next one you might start to kind of enforce more rigid boundaries which feels good and also people usually treat you nicer if you are a victim at least at the beginning and that feels at least more powerful and like you have some sort of control the next one might not be as common but a lot of people vic with a victim narrative keep saying like oh no one understands what i've been through no one can relate blah 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 and that just feels good for the ego it makes you feel feel special you're like oh i'm the only one in the world who's ever experienced this i'm so special and if you have like very low self-worth and self-love and confidence then that feeling of being special and your ego being rubbed a little bit feels really really good also if you've had a very long relationship with the victim narrative um, you might start guilting people and that is a very good way to control someone by enforcing guilt in them. So those are just a few of the like common benefits of having a victim narrative. Of course, those questions hopefully gave you kind of insight into what your positive benefits are of having this victim narrative and what your getting how this victim narrative is serving you in particular manipulation is basically getting your needs met in a roundabout way and if this is all subconscious if you weren't aware that you were doing that i don't want you to feel bad about yourself and start guilting yourself and go on this whole i'm a horrible person train that's not what we're doing please just leave that out the door we don't have to engage in that at all step number two is we're gonna debunk them so i want you to write as much as you want to literally go off as long as you need to, to just like get it all out. I'm gonna give you an example of, let's say I realize that my hidden positive benefit is that I get attention and validation and therefore I feel loved and cared for. That pity makes me feel loved and cared for. So what I might write is, Pity is a very poor substitute to love and it's not very sustainable. People will get tired of giving me pity and then I won't feel loved and I will experience what I'm most afraid of, feeling alone again. I now know that I want to feel loved and cared for and I will find ways to give myself that by focusing on self-love, self-care and my own happiness. I will feel better and I will also be way more enjoyable to be around as I won't be living from an empty cup. That is just a very quick example, but the goal is that we get to the point where we're like, okay, it doesn't make sense for me anymore to get love and care by people pitying me. Like, this is not what I want to keep doing. That's how you want to feel after this exercise. Okay, now you're going to pretend you, like you're a detective and again, journal is out, notes app, whatever, and you're going to write as many reasons why a victim narrative is negatively impacting you, your life, your future, your relationships, anything you can think of. And the longer this list is, the better, because we wanna get really aware of this. So now we're aware of how it was serving us and why we had it in the first place, that hidden positive benefit. And now we wanna get very clear on why it is not serving us so we can find better ways to get those needs met. It will just kind of ensure that you don't wanna get back into it and you see that very clearly and you're like, no. <laughs> we're not gonna keep doing that. So for example, a few of those things are, I feel stuck, like I'm not actually moving on with my life. I'm very negative, um, I'm very sensitive, I have very unstable moods because everything is triggering me, like everything is a very big deal to me, even if it's minor. I might be annoying to be around, like let's be real, this might not feel good to write down, but let's be honest here. People have to tiptoe around me, so they're not being honest with me, they can't be who they are. They have to keep like being very hyper aware of what they're saying and how they're acting so that I won't get offended or triggered or whatever. And this can be like minor things. So those are just a few reasons you can write down, but of course go all out, right? so many a painful but a very empowering realization is that no one is going to come and save you from yourself it is your job to do that and you need to decide to own your own life and to take your life into your own hands and give yourself what you want and treat yourself in the way that you want to be treated and do this work on yourself so that you feel happy and loved it is no one else's job to do that for you of course friendships relationships partners whoever can add to that but you need to take care of that first and foremost. Okay, the next journaling prompt. What bad thing am I afraid will happen if I let go of this victim narrative? So example, I will justify that what that person did, example, Chad cheating, 
uh, was okay and therefore I will feel like something's wrong with me or that I'm not lovable and I will feel like being cheated on was all my fault. So here you see your fear and a lot of the times our fears, our subconscious fears are very irrational and like once you bring it to the surface you're like what? Like being cheated on doesn't make it my fault even if I'm not a victim anymore. Like I can be like, yeah, I was cheated on. It sucked. Like it, I definitely have some trust issues that I'm working on. It took some time to work through all those emotions, but I'm not going to let that define me. Like I know it wasn't my fault. I know it's not something I deserved, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can have a completely different mindset towards it. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to shift it. So you basically just want to ask yourself, like, if I'm being really logical, is that actually going to happen? And then kind of debunk it. So again, take out your journal, write as much as you want to, get it all out. And by the way, when you're doing this, it's totally okay to like kind of release your feelings and not having everything perfectly packaged in this, like, I forgive him. I understand why it happened. I accepted. You don't have to get to that point yet. It takes time to process your emotions. So an example of how this might look like. By me not having a victim narrative anymore, it doesn't change the fact that I was wronged. It makes me sad that I was treated this way and I'm angry at him and at myself for letting this happen. By not having a victim narrative, it doesn't make what happened to me okay and it doesn't mean I have to be stuck in feeling unlovable. I want to take time to heal and work through these emotions and I don't want to be stuck in them, which is what I've been doing by having a victim narrative. I want to find ways to feel loved and cared for in healthy ways and I want to start by focusing on self-love. I want to give myself the grace to feel everything that comes up and I don't want to keep abandoning myself. Okay, so then you can do this next step once you've kind of like gotten your emotions out and processed it. You can do this weeks later, whenever it feels right. I don't want you to rush this process because you want to kind of just let yourself feel what comes up and not rush the process of like accepting what happened and coming up with solutions. So if it feels right to do that now, then go ahead and do it. If not, take time to like get those emotions out and then come back to this. So the next prompt is going to be, what are some solutions I can think of to start? So for example, in this scenario that we've been talking about, the cheating scenario, I'm going to start doing some inner child work because it's free. It's easy. I can do it at home. There's so many guided inner child meditations, visualizations. In my last video, which I'll link down below, it's all about like dating um, and healthy dating. I gave a particular exercise in inner child work that is very powerful and like changed my life and you can use it for so many different things. So I highly recommend checking that video. It's at the beginning of the video. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, totally fine. The next solution I thought of, I'm going to start consuming content or read a particular book about self-help, for example. I'll link my Amazon storefront with all of my favorite books that changed my life on there. So I'm going to start listening to podcasts, videos, books, whatever, and just start trying different practices and see what works for me and what is sustainable for me to stick with. Um, so I can actually, you know, get to a place where I love myself and I'm confident I'll have my confidence video down below also. <laughs> and the last thing I thought of for this situation, you don't want to make this too long. Like you don't want to, this to be a 20 step thing. If you just write one thing, that's good enough. And you start working on that and that will take you so far. And then when you're ready for the next step, you can do that. So um, the last solution that I wrote down is I'm going to write a gratitude list every day to create a more positive narration. You can't really think poor me and feel grateful at the same time. So gratitude really takes you out of that victim narrative, which is like a very negative mindset. If you want to take this a step further, you can do another journaling exercise and ask yourself, what positive effects do I see this solution having on my life? So obviously by writing a gratitude list every day, I'm going to kind of train my mind into seeing the positive in different things, which will really help me to become more resilient and deal with you know, everyday things much better. It will create a more positive mindset. I will be happier because when I walk around, instead of pointing out all the things that I don't like, I'll start pointing out the things that I actually like. It will improve my relationships because I will be happier and more positive and that's nice to be around, blah, blah, blah. Again, write as many as you can think of. And if you want to take it even further by you 
making this change of not having a victim narrative anymore and doing these things that you thought of as solutions, for example, um, what do you think your life is going to look like? And you can make a vision board if you want to. If you want to make it very visual, you can start doing like visualizations of your dream life, just something that you can look forward to. Like, what is that change going to look like? Because if that's a very strong vision and you're like, wow, my life will be so much better, you won't want to get back into that victim narrative. And that doesn't mean that you've processed all of the emotions associated with you having gone through that experience for me for example I haven't fully processed everything that's happened in my life like the worst things that have happened to me sometimes like something in my life now happens and I'm like oh my god it's like taking me fully back to that experience so I haven't fully processed all the emotions in that experience but that doesn't mean I have a victim narrative about it I'm not using that experience as a scapegoat and as justification for all of my negative qualities and my behavior and toxicity. I choose to let those experiences empower me instead of keep me stuck and it takes time to get to that point. You need to process a lot of things to get to this point and give yourself the time and grace to do that but it feels so good to get to a point where you're like yeah, I was cheated on. It sucked so bad. Like it was honestly really difficult for me to get through. Um, and, you know, I still sometimes get scared that I'll be cheated on and I can be a little cautious. Um, but I've learned so much about myself. I've learned to recognize red flags way better. Um, I've learned what I don't want in a relationship and how I do want to be treated. And I know it wasn't my fault. And that experience has really inspired me to take better care of myself and love myself and, and care for myself because I know no one can take that relationship from me. Like, I feel like the relationship where I was cheated was kind of just taken away from me and no one can take this away from me. And on that note, I have one last journaling prompt that you can do or not do. This is just an extra one. I really like this one. It's one of my favorites. So the prompt is, if I were to take full responsibility of my life and really own my own life, what would I do differently today? And then you can obviously start working towards that. So those are all of the journaling prompts and everything I wanted to say on this topic for now. It's such a big topic. I could chat about this for many, many more hours, but I hope I've given you some helpful nuggets so you can get started and hopefully um, this will help you. And remember the goal is to shift the way you view the situation by not invalidating what you went through. I think that's very important because I don't want you to be really hard on yourself or start blaming yourself for the things that happened to you, that is not what we're doing. We don't wanna swing the pendulum or whatever it's called too much to the other side. The victim and then this is all my fault. We wanna be in the middle. Like this has happened to you, it's not your fault. And what are you gonna do about it now to live the life you wanna live and to be happy? Like <laughs> that's what it's all about, to just be happier. Um, and if a victim narrative at the end of the day is serving you and is making you happy, by all means, keep doing it. It's your life. You can choose what you want. But um, I hope that this video has shown you that it's it's probably not. <laughs> okay, I love you guys so much. Let me know what video you want to see next. And I will see you very soon. Bye.